Hello, and welcome to another episode of Balanced Body Radio. I'm your host, Casey Ruff, and today we have two amazing guests to introduce to you now. Dr. Tro Kalasian, also known as Dr. Tro, which is easier to pronounce, is a board-certified internal medicine and obesity medicine physician. He is the medical director and founder of Dr. Tro's Medical Weight Loss and Direct Primary Care in New York. Dr. Tro's therapeutic focus includes diabetes, obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, metabolic syndrome, and PCOS. His approach is informed not only by the medical literature, but also his own experience losing 150 pounds on a ketogenic diet. His intensive lifestyle changes for patients include diet, exercise, improved sleep hygiene, as well as stress management and mental health. He has been a huge influence in the low carbohydrate movement, advocating for the proper human diet. He is the co-host of the Low Carb MD podcast, along with his friend, Dr. Friend Dr. Brian Lenskis. You can find Dr. Tro at his website at www.drtro.com and on Twitter at Dr. Tro. And today we have the absolute honor of interviewing Dr. Tro's much better half, his wife, Rosette, who is the founder and CEO of a low-carb baking mix company called Rosette's. Guys, what an absolute honor it is to welcome you to Balanced by Radio. Thanks for having us. So excited to be here. Yeah, thank you. Fun. Such an honor. Such an honor to host both of you. I think anybody in this world has, has you know, come across you guys and your work and everything that you've done in the world of low carbohydrate diets, which is really awesome. Um, if you're listening and not watching, you guys, both of you have awesome glasses. Your glasses game is just like right on point. Trying to be hip. <laughs> not sure our age. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, uh, Rosette, you certainly have the hair getting pulled off a little bit more than Troll, but that's a that's a different story. <laughs> oh, come on, already a hair joke. Like <laughs> made it in. Low blow. Low blow. Low blow. Uh, uh, well, you guys have such an interesting story, and that's where I would really love to start. Um, Dr. Tro, if we can start with you and, and you know why you decided to get into medicine and some of the, the things that you learned along the way as you were getting trained and how that related to things in your own health. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how far back you want to go. We could start at, you know, childhood. I was a, you know, frumpy little kid at age eight, and uh, uh, my parents came to this country with nothing, and basically hustled uh, and worked two full-time jobs. We were relegated to the modern diet, you know, our, you know, pizza pockets and uh, uh, McDonald's and Burger King is kind of what I grew up with. In addition, we had Armenian, you know, traditional Armenian cuisine, you know, hummus, rice, you know, pachlava, things like that. Just really, you know, I grew up basically on processed grains and cereals and pastas and et cetera. Um, and uh, of course I, you know, became obese. Uh, I had a bit reprieve, you know, a bit of reprieve. I lost some weight doing veganism essentially at a young age. And, uh, my body felt miserable, terrible, eventually went back to standard eating, but I lost weight. So I was exposed to, you know, I actually, for religious reasons for Lent as a young kid, I, I gave up meat and I gave up all animal products for over a year. It was great for weight loss, but devastated my body, my mental health, I'd say. Anyway, fast forward, I, I, you know, grew up in a family who was obese and I wanted to make a change. I wanted to make a difference in myself and their lives. Um, I didn't want to just, um, you know, I didn't want to just be like everybody else, right? I wanted to beat the gene. I wanted to beat obesity. So I, I was passionate about going to medical school at a very young age right? And uh, I, I knew at 13, I was going to go to medical school. And uh, fast forward, you know, I go to medical school, gain 20 pounds a year, you know, go to residency, gain 20 pounds a year, and find myself, you know, we get married in medical school, I meet Rosette, you know, she watches me grow, literally grow, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, when my career, my medical career, but also, you know, horizontally grow. And, you uh, so, you know, we had three, two kids together and we're, she's, you know, she's pre now pregnant, just about pregnant with our third kid. And, you know, this is seven, eight years ago, and I'm a 350 pound board certified doctor then. And uh, she says to me, you know, why can't you just figure this out? You know, you're a smart doctor. She really hustled me and played me really well. You know, she played on my ego. She's like, what, well, you know, you're a smart guy, go figure this out. I was a chief resident at, at Yale mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, she played on those, she's an attorney, so she knows how to you nice. know, negotiate and manipulate. And of course I don't win any arguments. <laughs> so, um, 
So here's the, the truth is, is she's like, go figure this out. And so what do you do when you're going to go figure it out? I was like, well, if this was pneumonia, I'd go look at the literature. I'd go look at the studies. I'd go look at the guidelines. I'd look at the studies that power the guidelines. I'd, I'd review the people that disagree with the guidelines. I'd look at everything, right? So I went to the nutrition literature. And what you'll quickly find is it's all a bunch of lies. The guidelines are a joke. Okay, eat five to seven fruits, have 12 servings of grains, eat a bunch of heart healthy whole grain. Like, it's just a joke. Mm -hmm. Pragmatically speaking, people who ate less carbohydrates always lost more weight, no matter what diet you looked at. Right? Not by much. So, when I first looked at the literature, looking at the A to Z trial, all these trials, diet fit, right? Always low carb did better. So, I'm like, wait a second. You know, if this was a drug for pneumonia and one drug always did better, I would choose that drug. So for me, it was just passionate. If anything, I had vegan, you know, predilections because, you know, as a young kid, that's how I lost weight. So, and my, you know, I grew up, my dad gardened and, and he had a garden. He ate, I don't count the special. I never met somebody who ate more vegetables, <laughs> you know, nuts. About, so I, I had no skin in the game. You know, I had no bias. There was no you know, and it's only when I went to the literature, when I read all of the studies, all of the data that that powers the BS we hear, you know, literally right now, the CDC, our CDC says diabetics should eat 60% carbohydrates. <laughs> Insanity. Yeah, you're laughing because it's a joke. It's a joke. Harvard, you know, where do they get their data from? Why do they lump fruits and vegetables together? Because the vegetables always get a, lo a lower mortality the more you eat. But the more fruit you eat after two servings, your mortality goes up. So they're lumping fruits and vegetables and whole grains, right, to push like this, you know, this food policy that's insane. that doesn't help people. In fact, there was a study just this week that was published that showed if you had four servings of fruit with fatty liver, your fatty liver got worse. Your, your diabetes got worse. So more fruit. So anyway, when you look in the literature, this nonsense, it's quickly unravels. And every single interventional trial shows low carb does better. So I'm 350 pounds. My wife looks at me and she's like, you really should lose some weight. Like I care about you. And I, you know, the, the fortune teller said you're going to die, you know, at a young age, right? Like she saw a fortune teller said that I was going to die. So, you know, and, um, you know, and so, so I just did what Devin had said would lower my carbs, right? And then all of a sudden, my mood's better, okay? My weight's coming off. I'm not hungry. My blood sugar is perfect. And then fast forward two years later, three years later, 150 pounds are off. And I read, I've read over 2,000 studies, maybe 3,000 studies, over 300 books, diet books, three obesity medicine textbooks. I'm board certified now in obesity medicine. I'm a, you know, the founding me member of the, you know, I'm on the board of directors for the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, where we actually teach the data now, right? We teach the science now, where our, the responsibility is to train other physicians. That's our calling, right? Because I wish that existed eight years ago right? When I was a helpless 350 pound doctor. So anyway, I lost 150 pounds and I dedicated my life to ending obesity and ending diabetes. So wow. I started a clinic. I left, I can't, you can't practice in the insurance model if you actually want to help people. So I left my cushy job and my wife was terrified. Oh, yeah. I took out a huge business loan. My wife was terrified. Okay. Still terrified. Right. And I opened this practice so that we can end diabetes and we can end obesity. And then other people are trapped, you know, by bad advice, by doctors who don't care about results and care about following BS, you know, authoritarians. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, this is, this is it. So the last five years, you know, we've, <coughs> we've helped, we've probably had 40,000 pounds lost, countless diabetes cases reversed. Um, you know, uh, it's just, and, and I get to help people every day and some people need meds. Some people need drugs. 
you know, some people need surgery, you know, it's not, it's not a one size fits all approach, but most people just need to see what food does to them, right? Give them a CGM, give them lab works, show them the fruits of their labor, right? Show them how their body's reversing, show them the harm of the way they're eating in real time. That continuous glucose monitor is amazing, right? Give them real time feedback, be available like triple A, you know? Like people can text us, call us, we're on an app, we have an app for them so that they can just get immediate, you know, help in real time. I'm struggling right now. What do I do in my car if I get a flat tire? I call right away. Call us right away. Look on the app what to do. We'll tell you what to do. Right? We gotta, we have help for you in real time. So by becoming what I needed, you know, we're we're reaching thousands of people now. And um, you know, we have 3,000 people on our app. People, I just got, you know a call from somebody who signed up for our program and I got to return his money because he's like, I watched your first eight videos and I lost 20 pounds in my first month. I was like, you don't need me. God, like, God, I got enough business. Take your money. Go. You're on your own. You Love know? It. So this is, this is the, um, you know, the podcast, we can't see everybody. So go use the app, go listen to the podcast. It's free. It's there. You don't need to pay me. You know, some people need help. You don't need to pay me. You know, people are like, well, Cho's about the money and this and that and blah, 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 blah. He's a, you know, we have so many people like, you don't need me. It's on the app. It's on our, it's a free app. It's on our podcast is for free. You know, so that, that's my story. And then, you know, I'll let Rosette tell her own story. So, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let her get to that. But I'll tell you one of the things that, you know, um, I, I didn't even know that she had terrible migraines. And as wow. I'm going low carb, her migraines just disappear. And then you look in the literature, it's there. Ketogenic exactly. diet, work for seizures and migraines. You know, so I'll let her tell, you know, her, her side, but that's my story. You know, that's, that's, so. that's absolutely. They've, they've called for my license to be revoked. They've said that, you know, I'm a grifter. They say that, you know, I don't know what they say about me, but, you know, you know, the doctors don't like me. They almost kicked me out of Obesity Week, which is the big conference, you know, uh, 2019, they kicked me out. Well, they're going to see me again this year. Hopefully they won't <laughs> kick me out. But um, so, but they don't want to hear it. They wow. don't want to hear it. My colleagues don't want to hear it. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. What an amazing story. I'm thinking about two different things. You're mentioning all the fruits and vegetables. And I remember at one time, I think it was the company I was with trying to push supplements on people and like multivitamins that they said to get your needed vitamins and minerals in a day, you need to eat nine to 11 servings of organic fruits and vegetables that are all like different colors and grown in organic soil to be able to do that. And since probably you won't be able to do that by this multivitamin, which is absolutely ridiculous. And even just today, it's so funny. You mentioned that the, the percentage carbohydrate recommended, recommended for diabetics. Absolutely insane. One, one of my clients asked me to record all the things that I eat in a day. He knows that I do carnivore. I've been carnivore for over three years. He's like, well, you just like record some things like, fine. I, I don't use trackers. I hate trackers. Let me just, I'll, let me re-download my fitness pal. I pull back out. I start tracking things. And then I notice that the, the recommended percentages comes back like a recommended percentage for carbohydrate intake is 50% protein, 30% fat, 20%. Somebody <laughs> on the street who wants to track their calories thinks they're doing this amazing thing. They download the most popular calorie tracker. All I had to do is type in MY, and that was the first thing that popped up. The first thing they're going to see is they should be eating 50% of their calories from carbohydrates. It's insanity. And they yeah. probably will. They're probably already doing that. They're probably succeeding and thinking, well, okay, great. Like I, I have the cereal and the oatmeal and the bananas. Like I should, I should be good to go. It's crazy. I mean, uh, look, it's a, uh, the, the CDC right now recommends diabetics not count carbs and to eat 50% of carbohydrate, 50% of their calories, you know, 50, 60% from carbohydrates. It's a vanity. <laughs> It's really insanity. And uh, 
not vilifying fruit. You want to have fruit? Like you could pick low glycemic fruit, like, you know, a banana is 32 grams of sugar in some cases, you know, like you could do berries, you know, like you want vitamin C, get it from a pepper, man. Like you don't need to have an orange. You want potassium, get it from, you know, an avocado. Like you really don't need, um, you don't need the sugar if you're looking for nutrients. I don't think any of us are really eating for nutrients. So like we're not, nobody sits there and says, you know what, I'm going to have this banana. My kids don't look at the banana and say, I want potassium, you know? So yeah, I think you're, you're onto something that, you know, we've been sold a bag of goods. It's crazy. Yeah. And we, we have absolutely fallen for it. Rosette, I would love to hear your story as well. Can you tell us kind of your story into health? And I, I will be asking you the question for somebody who is a spouse and is seeing <laughs> that the health of that other person is going, you know, not the right direction. And, and how, how, how were you able to bring this up in a way that was, you know, sensitive and supportive, but also impactful? So as we hear your story, I, I definitely want to hear that part because I think that part is really important. And, you know, when, when somebody tries to improve their life, oftentimes it can trigger the other person. That can be a real thing for people. Yes, that is um, very much the case um, we experienced as well. I was very active growing up. I didn't have a lot of the health issues. Obesity was not rampant in my family, but we did have a lot of diabetes. Um, but again, we never saw sugar as a problem. Things were more limited growing up for us where we didn't bring in the sugary cereals. We didn't have the entomans. You know, we, we made homemade foods and cakes and cookies. And, um, and so I never really experienced um, um, health issues like Cho did. Um, as we went through our graduate programs and had families, you know, I was, um, he was doing the graduate program, gaining the 20 um, pounds a month a month, sorry, a, a year, year. <laughs> pounds a year. And um, as a spouse, your next step, I didn't recognize it happening as quickly um, until I um, started getting pregnant and we had my first child. I couldn't lose the weight as easily, but then we quickly had, you know, got pregnant with my second um, child. And when I started to lose the, or trying to lose the weight then, and I couldn't get it off as fast as I, would like five pounds growing up, you know, because I would just go run, you know, a mile or, I'd, you know, um, do sport. I, I think I understood why he was having trouble too. So telling someone you care about not to eat that French fry or not to eat um, that much rice or not to get that second plate of food, it, you think you're doing it from a caring place. You, you think you're saying it softly and with love, but it doesn't matter how you're doing it, it's how it's being perceived also. So I think it might've been just, it's too sensitive of a topic to be perceived from a loving place. Um, so I just started cooking differently. And by the way, that's a, that's a hallmark of food addiction. That is a key hallmark of food addiction. So the hallmarks of food addiction are emotional manipulation. So if my wife came to me and said, Tro, don't drive, you know, your, your car is flat. I'd feel supported. My emotion would be support and love and gratitude, right? I'd yeah. say, thank you. Yeah, like, no, oh my no God, thank yous. <laughs> right? And what happens next when you feel love, support and gratitude is you fix the tire, right? And emotionally, when she came to me about food, I felt, you know, screw you, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. I'm a grown man. Right? Anger, agitated, oppositionally defined. These are rooted in addiction, right? Because what happens next when you feel those things? You eat the foods that you know you, should be, you shouldn't be eating, right? And the second hallmark of food addiction is logic. You should say, maybe you shouldn't eat that. And I say, well, we should, really shouldn't waste food. Yeah. So you see, my logic's been manipulated, right? Just like my emotions were manipulated, right? If she said, you know, really you shouldn't drive, you have a flat tire. I'd be like, you're absolutely right. I wouldn't say, no, 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 we gotta, you know, we gotta get there. You know, I think we can get there. I wouldn't do that. I'd stop the car, call for help right away, right? So the, I wasn't eating, right? Because of starving kids in rural countries. I was using logic, manipulate, my logic was manipulated to foster a behavior that I didn't, you know, that I needed to change, but didn't. 
And, and I, you know, your outlook, your mentality can also be, you know, really manipulated. You know, like um, I never, you know, she'd say like, oh, you've been off plan. I'd be like, well, you know what? I'll have the Doritos. I'll have the cake. I'll start again next week. Right. But if she said, oh, you got a flat tire again, I wouldn't say, oh, let me slap, you know, slash my tire, smash my windows. I'll call the mechanic on Monday. Right. I wouldn't do that. So the key hallmark, the reason, you know, she would tell me all the time, she would support me. But when you're in that addiction mindset, you know, there's no, you have to understand what you're dealing with. Right. Because I have a woman here who loves and supports me, you know, <laughs> and, and she knows that I'm going to be a little angry. Right? And, and until we um, found out we were having our third child, um, and I did have another just regular conversation like, Tro, you know, like you're the heaviest you've been. We're having three kids. What's going to happen? You know, God forbid something happens. You know, we're young, young family. I don't know. I, I think I'm saying the same words that I've been saying for the last five years or so. But so I don't know from your perspective, what was different in that time to, you know, like click finally. But um, maybe... I, I don't know. Yeah, I so, mean, I, like it hits, you know, I'll tell you that shame and the guilt are so strong. Yeah. Right. When you feel that shame and guilt, you put up your walls. And then I think it, it hit me at some point. I'm like, this woman loves and cares about me. Why am I like if she came and said, you know, maybe you shouldn't drive with that flat. I wouldn't say, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. I'm a grown man. You know, so I started evaluating my my mindset and i didn't really know at the time i knew something was wrong i didn't know what it was mm -hmm. it's truly the addiction mindset right you know and it is and this is tough to understand it's not an easy concept for most people to understand right so uh yeah anyway so yeah so then we when he finally got on board um um we i got on board <laughs> yeah um i i didn't know how to support him the best way. But you know, you go to the stream, clear out the kitchen, clear out the house, take out all the junk, take out what you think is junk. Um, but it's it's hard, especially when you have like little <coughs> little kids that are used to, I mean, our kids didn't always get the goldfish and the bananas and the stuff, but they knew what they were. Cause you know, when you're taking them to the park, you take a little bit along with you, you know, like you kind of like, anyway, so we cleared the house as much as we could from that stuff, but I have a crazy sweet tooth. You know, we grew up, um, you know, with all the Middle Eastern desserts, they're having syrups and it's just, I need an end cap to my day or to my meal. And so um, now I'm supporting my husband, but I'm getting cranky. I can't get the cakes or the cookies. Well, it's not just that, right? We were, it became birthday. You're right. I remember Everything. she made me. Yeah. Yeah, so like the, when I got a hundred, when I lost a hundred pounds, Right. She yeah. bought me a cake. That was like a steak. Right. It was like a steak cake. It looked like a steak. Right. But it was a sugary cake. And she's like, okay. it's your birthday. Yeah. And you're like, you're not going to have any? He's I like, said, no. It's like, it's so pretty. You know, she's like, I legit made you a steak <laughs> cake. And I remember that. I was like, why don't you make it easy for people to make cakes, right? That aren't high in sugar and high in carbohydrates. Yeah. She legit, she made, so like she got some local baker to make, it was beautiful. It would look like a steak, but it was like, broccoli. but it was like, it was legit sugar and grains and I wasn't going to do it. Right. And so I remember this was like my first year in, or maybe yeah. like a second. And it was like, no, it was one and a half years in. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and that's when I think Rosette's was born, you know, yeah. because I was like, it's got, we got to make this easy for people. You know, they don't have, you can't, yeah. you can't feel deprived yeah. and you cannot feel like you can't manage social situations yeah. and make this a sustained lifestyle. Like you and I could be carnivore, but not everybody could do that. I can't do it. Right. I know? Can't. And some people like me, you know, are legit food addicted. Right. And they are going to have to, some people are going to need methadone. They're on heroin using dirty needles. They're going to need methadone, right? And so that's where, you know, she came in. So now I'm like, I'm leaving the system. Screw an insurance company. Screw 
the hospital system. Screw them. I'm not, you know, they want me to see patients in seven minutes. I can't do this anymore. So I'm taking a hundred, you know, $250,000 loan to start a practice on my own scared shitless. And here she is wow. starting a small business. All the scared, sh- you know, I'm not entrepreneurial at all. When he <laughs> came up with this idea, like suggested it, I was like, okay, no, you know, we have little kids. How does all this stuff work? And I went out into the supermarkets, into the shops, even to the health stores, <laughs> and we couldn't find anything clean. Like you would find almond flour cookies. They had cane sugar in it, you know, or you'd find the stevia, but they were made with gluten free flour. And so I couldn't find the combination that I wanted for my family, which was, you know, the, we use almond flour and coconut flour as the bases. We use the erythritol and monk fruit blend because we find that it has the least bitterness. We try to make the mixes um, as simple and clean as possible so that you can recreate your favorite foods and not fall off your nutrition plan, not fall off your, you know, lifestyle goals. You can stay low carb. You can stay um, keto. I mean, again, if you're carnivore, bless you. You know, I can't do it. I'm not, um, I can't eat just meat. I need that flavor. I need the sides. I need, you know, like more. So for, um, for those that, you know, need a little bit more, instead of going and falling off with the, <coughs> you know, like just, the, I cannot the tell cookies, you the how many, Hines. I cannot tell yeah. you how many patients it was yeah. one cake, yeah. one yeah. cookie, one vacation. Yeah. And then it's, it's like, messy. that's it. Up, yeah. You know, that's it. So, Even the one cake would give me migraines. So forget like, you know, wow. fall completely like a little bit of sugar. Once you're off of it completely, it dropped me and I was incapable of doing anything of parenting. So I was like, you know what? It's not, it's not right. And if it's doing it to me, what is it doing to our kids? I noticed that my kid's attention span was just you mean all off the, of when you're when you come on off, sugar. Yeah. When you're on sugar, yeah. they're just unable to focus as much they're yeah. crazy they're riled up they're moody I mean, you had three migraines a month yeah you wow. know, for yeah. years yeah and i didn't i didn't really and into food. it became like nothing like once yeah. every six months and the minute she has yeah. carbohydrate you know processed sugar it's yeah it's just like wow migraine yeah yeah and we saw the changes yeah. in our kids i mean yeah. you know like i don't know like my what daughter it is, my daughter has a sweet tooth too and she had eczema since she was 18 months old. And again, wow. I didn't associate it to food. Um, but once we cleaned up the house and then started, you know, with the uh, um, cookies or cakes once in a while. That were low started, carb, that almond were low free. Carb. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, sorry, carb, almond you know, flour, monk fruit. The know. eczema disappeared. And now wow. they're in school. They have school celebrations. We go to parties and barbecues. We we don't control them in the outside world. We let them know what's going on. You know, they're able to make their own decisions. But if they go overboard, it she looks at her arms and she's erupts. like, oh, mom, I didn't eat well. I'm, you know, red again or whatever it is, you know? So like, um, it's nice to bring that awareness to them too, as they're getting older, to be able to understand, you know, what sugar does to them and what the... <sighs> grains is doing to them how they're they're not eating for nutrition purposes like you guys were saying before who eats to you know who eats yeah. thinking oh i need to be nutritionally sound right now you know but for them i'm telling them your your young kids growing up you know eat something that's gonna hold you not keep you hungry you're gonna feel good and energized you know like just simple words and my 10 year old starting to get it because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this or if I was going to say edit it out. He had a swim meet yesterday and oh we were at the pool all day. It was bad. And he's 10 years old and they're giving pizza. They did well, they did well in the meet. They right? did well, but they were giving pizza, <laughs> They right? gave pizza out. So we don't want to restrict them. So they're like, can we have pizza? So they each had a slice. I was like, you, you swam all day. They each had a slice. <laughs> My son felt miserable right wow. after. Wow. And he, wow. he, he still, he goes, it was the pizza, mom. It's the pizza. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. They usually, I mean, we make, when we make pizza, we're cooking it on the grill with, you know, an almond yeah. flour base. I mean, they get like a cheese and, but you know, it's like a nice, rich, you know, real crust, yeah. right? Oh my God. Yeah. And stuff. they haven't, they don't usually get that stuff and we don't want to impose anything, but anyway, it's really impacted our family, our entire family, my practice. Yeah. She's a mom entrepreneur now, you know? <laughs> I mean, never thought we'd be doing this, yeah. you know? That's uh, amazing. It's nice. That's amazing. 
it's nice to be able to support a community, you know, and to see that people are actually <laughs> using your product and they're enjoying it and they're um, they're they're noticing their lifestyle. Like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, just yeah, they're sustaining their they're lifestyle. sustaining their lifestyle. They're enjoying it. They're not depressed. They're not sad that they can't have a cookie. You know, they're not mm-hmm. feeling deprived, which is which is great. Yeah, and it honestly makes my job easier. Like, you know, they didn't. You know, this didn't exist seven years ago. It didn't exist. You know, the biggest thing people tell me, chocolate, ice cream, pizza, cookies, cake, right? Help me not feel deprived. What, what's going to knock you off your plan? Feeling deprived, feeling hungry, and not being able to manage social situations. Yeah. Yep. Well, 100%. you know, now, you know, we had to make, like I said, I've been on a mission to make the world the way I wish I had it 10 years ago. You know, we had to make the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners. Now we have 500 doctors and dietitians that are members. We have 2,000 people, okay, that are part of our organization and 500 professionals, right? Mm-hmm. And the, po- the purpose of this is to certify and educate doctors so we can all have a common language. You know, we didn't, the education didn't exist. It's been hidden. The, you know, the, the podcasts weren't there, we made that, right? We made the medical society. We made the business. You know, we've like literally, we've provided a practice that practices in 50 states so that anybody anywhere in the country can get good metabolic care that they deserve. We made telemedicine ridiculously easy, remote scales, remote blood pressure mm-hmm. cuffs, remote sleep studies, remote continuous glucose monitors. We have an app that makes the lifestyle transition easy I mean, I, I've really like busted my butt, you know, to try to make this different, a different world. He's totally passionate. Like you really, I couldn't tell. Yeah, Yeah, I know. I was going to say, you could, you could probably tell on Twitter, you know, all the people, people hating on him, but like he's lived it. He's trying to prevent others from going down that path. He's trying to keep it healthy. And when you're passionate like him, it's, it's hard to sometimes. Yeah, but here's the thing. They're trapped. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, like I'm a, I got the me, I have money. I, I thank God, you know, you know, I get paid well. I, you know, I don't have any financial issues. I have time in the day. I have, you know, I'm educated, you know, I'm two, two board certifications and it was still hard for me. Imagine yeah. you are alone. You have nobody. Your doctors are saying you're going to kill yourself. You, you have your family saying, eat this, you know, cake. Right. Why, you know, why aren't you eating the food I cooked for you? Right. You have friends that are pushing you to, you know, like your social circle isn't supportive. You joined the gym. You joined the gym in January and you got on the treadmill and you did the diet and you ate all the kale salads and you, you did it last January and the January before and the January before. And it's not your fault that by mid February you are starving and cold and you have no energy or willpower left and you think you suck. You think you're bad. Yeah, yes. exactly. exactly. I've, I've been there, you know, extra chicken on the salad, but still feeling hungry <laughs> and no power. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. totally. Oh, it's the worst. So the problem yeah. is people are really stuck and then I'm nowhere to turn. So we've tried to literally, you know, podcasts, uh, you know, the, we made the meta, we made a physician's group, a physician's organization. We've made an app. We have made like we have made a company that makes mixes for you. Like we have literally poured our lives into we, this. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's it's absolutely amazing. I had a session yesterday with my 14 year old um, kid that I train for motocross, and you know he's going through the session, and all of a sudden he's. Um, not allergic to grass like he normally was. He's not sniffling and he's, his nose breathing is completely on point. He's normally very scattered with his attention. Anything will draw him off and he's really focused and he's doing these hard workouts. He's got his nationals coming up in like two or three weeks. Like, dude, you're, you're doing great today. Like your mindset's really good. Your nasal breathing's great. Like, what did you do? Cut out sugar. No shit. Of course, that's what you did. No wonder you can focus. No wonder you're breathing better. No wonder your allergies went away. And, you know, Rosette, you're right. Like, I think as adults, if you've been doing this, especially for a long time, it's a little bit easier to be, you know, carnivore, eat whole foods, but we forget what it was like in the beginning. Um, 
I always tell this story. This is funny. I'll, I'll tell you guys. Um, so in Utah on, on the 24th of July, it's a bigger holiday than the 4th of July is It's called pioneer day. And it's when the Mormon pioneers came into the state and established themselves in Salt Lake city. So if you're not Mormon, you don't celebrate pioneer day. You celebrate pie and beer day. <laughs> this is kind of thing to like, you know, stir the chili a little bit. And last year I had a pie. I couldn't stop eating the pie. I kept eating and eating and eating. I stayed up all night. My anxiety was through the roof to the point that like, I no more sugar. I'm off and I can eat meat for the rest of my life. And that's fine. Nothing is worth that for me. But that was not the way it was in 2017, 2018, when I first came across this stuff. And we need those kind of hacks and tricks and bridges. Anything's better than a normal cake you can get at the store. But you still, for, especially when you're getting started, you need something to help you. And so using those low carbohydrate products can be so helpful. Yes, yes. It's definitely helpful. Like, and I, so we do the baking mixes for cakes, cookies, whatever. I have advice for um, chips, you know? So mine is chips. Like I need the chips to, you know, like just <laughs> don't look at me like that. Yeah. So I, I use, I'm a huge fan. I don't know if the quest, oh, you know, oh, the, oh, quest chips. Yeah, yeah quest yeah. chips. A huge fan of them because I need that crunch. Parmesan I need crisp too are good. Yeah. Pork rinds are. The Pork rinds are fine. <laughs> We but, had pork rinds. You never yeah. had pork rinds until no, uh, I, I three Ra years ago, Ra Ryan Wiley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like everyone has something that they fall back on. It's an emotional time too. It's a stressful time during the pandemic, post pandemic, especially when you have little kids at home. You know, it, it you look for something to bring you comfort. You know, and food is usually the first thing people go to, right? I don't know, like, do you find that also? Definitely the case. Food so, first, food. then alcohol, then anxiolytics or, you know, drugs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. so I bake those a are cake. the three vices. Yeah. So I bake a cake a, a week and I got through it that way, you know, like find what works for you. And if there's better alternatives, don't feel bad for using them is what I tell people. Like use it so you don't fall back and then you'll eventually get off you know, of it if that's your goal nobody has a problem using a flat you know spare tire nobody your spare tire. you know <laughs> like nobody's got a problem using like that's what these things are you want to lose weight and feel great yeah eat you know meat fish chicken eggs greek yogurt maybe plus or minus you know vegetables and low carb food you want to feel great eat that right you want to feel great eat that if you have social and behavioral issues that make it difficult for you, right? Emotional, social, and behavioral issues that you need to address, right? You don't know what to do when you go to your neighbor's house. You don't know what to do when you go to a barbecue. You don't know how to handle desserts. You bit you, you know, you you can't give up chocolate. Whatever that is, right? You can just replace it out. Yeah. Do an audit, self audit, and that doesn't mean go and eat you know, whatever quest chips and, you know, rosettes every day. It means yeah. like, you know, when you need it, when you would have otherwise eaten the pie and felt miserable or the pizza, like my son ate yesterday and felt terrible. Hey, if you can fix that, fix it. Yeah. You know? And you can enjoy the, the, you know, you can enjoy it. So yeah, it's been, you know, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a wild ride, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. It's so inspiring. And, and yes, the passion comes right through. And it, I, the word I kept hearing uh, through this conversation is, is creation. You guys are making things. You're not trying to compete with other people. You are making this as you go. The podcast is a great example. Like you start pushing record on some of these conversations, you know, all of a sudden you have an entire library of all kinds of helpful information that you could say like, Hey, you, you have diabetes. Great. We did 17 episodes about that. Here's one. I think you would really love. Why don't you Put this on your phone, go listen to it, you know, between drives rather than listen to music and educate yourself. Like it's out there, like you said, it's available. And and you guys are the ones out there creating it out of thin air, which is so super cool. We've mentioned a lot this podcast also, the emotional ties behind, you know, eating and gaining weight and weight loss also can be highly emotional. And Troll, I've heard you talk about this as well. Some of the what you felt and thought earlier when you were 350 pounds doesn't necessarily go along with the weight a lot of that emotional and mental baggage can still continue can you talk to to you know somebody who's maybe losing weight and still dealing with some of those things and and what advice you would give them oh it doesn't change you know it doesn't change at all you get agitated here i'm gonna do you know this is the questionnaire for alcohol let's do it for food okay do you want to cut down on unhealthy food yes 
Do you get agitated when people tell you to cut down on healthy food? Yes. Do you feel guilt, shame with your relationship to food? Yes. Do you feel really compelled to eat sometimes? Like you lose control. Do you hide wrappers? Do you eat in secret? Do you, you know, go, you know, avoid eating in front of other people because of the pressure of it and then lose control at home? Do you lose control eating at night? Do you regret some of your behaviors when it comes to food? You know, those questions and those answers to those questions, they don't change. They don't change. They don't change overnight. They don't change if you lose 100 pounds. They don't change if you lose 150 pounds. You know, I, I st seven years later, I still answer those questions the same way. Yes, I want to cut down on healthy food. Yes, it, sometimes my initial instinct is to get agitated and angry when somebody tells me to cut down on unhealthy food, even as a grown doctor. Right. I mean, now it's gotten a lot easier. Yes, I have shame and guilt if I go off plan. Right. So these, you know, these don't change. You know, I, I, you know, I can see my abs now, you know, and I was in the gym not too long ago and somebody made a joke about being fat and I got embarrassed. Right. I got embarrassed. Like, are they talking about me? You know, I had somebody, I was on the, the Stairmaster. I didn't, you know, pick, I, you got to put your earmuffs on, but just know that I love you so much. So I didn't know what was going on. She comes up to me, she's looking at me and I'm on the Stairmaster. I'm like, well, why are you looking at me? Like, I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, something on my hair. Tights? Yeah, I was in my new <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, and she keeps looking at me. I'm like, why is she fucking looking at me? Like, sorry to curse, you know? You're good. And then, then anyway, whatever she starts talking to me, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's talking with me now, right? Like, why is she talking with me, right? Like, I just want to do my, my hit workout on the Stairmaster, right? Why is she talking to me? And then like, whatever, fast forward the conversation. I'm like, great, this is done. You know, I'm leaving seven minutes left, you know? And she's, she, you know, she finds me and she gives me her number. Right. And I'm like, what do you like? I don't, I'm married, you know, she kind of didn't, wasn't wearing the ring. I wear the ring around my neck, you know, so maybe she didn't see it on my, on my You're wrist, hidden. you know, I was like, I'm married, <laughs> but like, I didn't even think that maybe she found my physique appealing and she was hitting on me. Right. I didn't even think that, right. It wasn't even a thought, you know, I'm like, what the fuck is this person? Sorry. What the hell is this You're person kidding. doing? You know, like, leave me alone. You know, leave me alone. So how does, does that mindset, does those initial instincts, are they, you know, yeah, I'm aware of them. I'm very aware of them now, you know, but they don't change quickly. Right. And you have to kind of reevaluate that mindset constantly. Right. And mm -hmm. some things we may revert you back to the old mindset. You know, you got to be on top of it. Watch that. Hey, look, it's not you. I'm not an oppositionally defiant, you know, angry, agitated person. The food addiction makes me that way, right? I'm not a, you know, person that doesn't like to socialize with people, right? <laughs> right? I'm not a, I'm not, you know, I'm not a person. I like, I like talking with people, right? But when it comes to food and body image, I still have issues that I'm working with, Yeah. right? And so, uh, yeah, these things take a long time. Do you so think you've gotten, yeah, so, so do you think you've gotten to a better place as far as self-compassion goes? Oh, I mean, definitely. Yeah. The minute you realize that, you know, everybody's voices are the same, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've asked, you know, do you feel like, you know, when somebody tells you, you want to, you shouldn't eat something unhealthy that you, you know, you feel like, leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. You know, I'm a grown man. They'll tell me what to do. Grown man or woman. Everybody has the same language. You know, you could be somebody in North Dakota you could be somebody that was born in Europe. You know, you could be somebody in New York, completely different upbringing, same language, same self-thought, right? So it's not our unique characteristics. If we all have the same inner voice, anger, agitation, opposition, defiance, that's rooted in addiction. How do we all say we shouldn't waste food? We're wildly overweight. We all want to lose weight. We all want to have, you know, better health. And we're allowing this logic manipulation, right? How do we all have that same language? Why do we all say, we've been really good, you deserve it. We're allowing that if we're really good, we deserve health, mm -hmm. you know? How do we all say, 
You know, you've been off plan, you might as well stay off plan, right? How do we all have the same inner dialogue? And that inner dialogue is an addiction dialogue. The mindset is an addiction mindset, right? That's why it's the same, right? That's why you can be anywhere in the country and feel completely alone, be ridden with shame and guilt and poor self-image, not quite understand the degree of which addiction can manipulate can manipulate you yeah so, yeah i've worked a lot on it but the biggest thing is awareness yeah yeah i love that i love that tell us a little bit more about your clinic we've already mentioned a lot of technology um you've already mentioned cgms which we could talk a little bit more about but but how how, how has that scary transition over to a direct payment system how has that gone um you know obviously you're really putting your ass out there if you're doing that because you can't collect money from insurance is that correct yeah, look, we don't collect, we sent, so look, bottom line is, is I, I saw right away when I worked for a hospital system that when you think about things through the lens of an insurance company, you end up doing things in a really terrible way. Like, for example, just take this med, come back, see me in a month, right? Just let, oh, you got to come in for a blood pressure check, right? You make unnecessary visits to generate occurrences so you can get paid more. Right. Oh, you know, you have them here. So you think, oh, why don't I do an EKG? Why don't I do a spirometry? Why don't I do, why don't I do these things? Because the insurance is going to pay me more. Right. So when you are beholden to the insurance, I recognize very quickly as an early young doctor that it, they make you be a worse doctor. It's very implicit, but I just described it. This is common practice. Right. Oh, come see me in two weeks to make sure it gets better. You don't, and I could just text you. Do you get better? Did you get better? Yeah, I'm better. You know, like, okay. You know, like, you don't need to come to me. I will send you a cuff. You could take your measurement at home. We will trend it. We'll look at it in real time. Right? So we have championed asynchronous care, meaning like you're at home, you're using your scale, your cuff, your blood glucose monitor, your continuous glucose monitor, your ketone meter, whatever it is, we're tapped in. So you're living your life. We could care for you in real time, asynchronously. No visits needed, right? So this is true medicine, but it takes a step, step more. You got to deliver asynchronous education and insight, okay? Listen to this podcast. Read, watch this video we put into the app. Re use this resource. It's in the app. Text it, right? We'll text it to you. We'll give you an outline of how to absorb this content throughout your journey, right? So it's asynchronous care. Why do they have to wait for me to get better? They shouldn't. Our cars are better than, than our medical systems. We have a jack, a spare tire, a service to call. They text in real time. They call in real time. You have a warranty plan, you know? And, you know, you can press the button to get somebody, you know, so you can press OnStar to get help right now. And it gives you check engine lights, low fuel <laughs> lights. You know, it tells you in real time. Our cars, you know, are better suited for maintaining their health than our health cares. And wow. the problem is, so that's it. So we said, screw insurance companies. We're going to be of value to people. And how do we make this better? So yeah, we're on we're on some next level stuff. Company, big multinational companies are hiring us because we make their employees healthier. We save on prescription costs. We're doing great work. We're hiring another doctor. You know, it, we have two amazing health coaches, Amy Igus and Brian Wiley. I mean, this clinic is, you know, something special. And I'm, I'm, I have an amazing team, mm -hmm. including awesome. a great legal counsel, <laughs> general counsel, also is Tony Martinez, my office manager, Talleen, my medical assistants, Tori and Esther. You know, it's just awesome. We have a great group here. That's incredible. Wow. We just talked to Dr. Mark Cazella. Um, I'm sure you'll be aware of him for the third time. I think we spoke with him and he gave a presentation here a few months ago um, at Keto Salt Lake called Compassion in Healthcare. And he just routinely gives out his cell phone number. Like he, he'll just give it out and like says like you just got to text me and whatever. And he was telling me the other day it was as we were talking, like there was a person who was initially denied um, access because he was really full at their clinic, uh, found out that person's blood sugar was like 400, some asinine 
number. Like, like this is like critical stat. Basically he couldn't get insulin. He couldn't get the needles he needed from the, from the, um, from the pharmacy. It was just bananas. And this guy would have like, you know, okay, I guess I didn't get my medication. No worries. I'll just go home or whatever. So Mark works through his lunch and sits down with this guy and teaches him why blood sugar is so important. Here's how you measure it. Here's how you dose your insulin. Let's avoid most of this in the future by changing your diet. These are the things you should eat. And it's, it's not a question <laughs> for him his, he said it's just this is the vocation this is what you do you you became a doctor to help people so help people B people text him and call him all the time with questions and he'll just sit there and answer and if he has to work late he just does it but he he takes that responsibility very seriously and it's so inspiring it's so inspiring to see people like you people like him out there who are just giving their time we don't care if it takes a little bit more time. I don't care if I don't make as much money as I could. Money is not the most important thing in life. Like I'd rather sleep well at night thinking that I actually help somebody. And so I, I just absolutely love that approach. And I'm sure that you get to see all those results and all those changed lives and all the people that are not only doing, you know, everything they're doing in the clinic, but their families, their kids, and everybody else who's benefiting. Just it's, it's one of those rocks in the lake that just ripples out forever. It must be so awesome and so inspiring. Yeah, look, it's a, it's an absolute pleasure. I, I would say, I wish we could do, we do have charity care, right? So we do take people who can't afford us. They fill out an application. Um, you know, I, I uh, we need to do more. We need to do more. I can't reach everybody. And uh, Mark is just an amazing person, by the way. We're good friends and we sit on the board together of the SMHP. That's right. Um, so, uh, he, and he, you know, he's done great things for West Virginia in terms of getting rid of sugar out of the hospital, which was huge. So he is an amazing, amazing person. And uh, I'm hoping one day he'll come work with me <laughs> in some way <laughs> about that. I've tried to convince him <clears throat> because he's, he's an, like an idol to me. But, um, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is, yeah, I don't need, you know, it's not, I would say, it's not that, uh, look, I need a, a roof over my head, but more important than a roof over my head is being happy with the person I see in the mirror, you know, I, and being happy, you know, when I lay my head down at night, being happy with the person that I am and the work that I've done. And the truth of the matter is, is, you know, we're, we are booked out. We routinely send people away. You know, we have people who aren't ready. Maybe their parents signed them up. Maybe their, you know, their kids signed up a parent. You know, we get those people here, we talk to them. Are you really interested in change? Most of the time, if somebody else is paying, it's no. Right? So nine times out of 10, we're returning money. I don't need money. I don't need to waste anybody's time. I don't need to waste our time. Right? There's people out there who really, really need me and really need us. And so, you know, we don't do the 30 pounds for, you know, their wedding stuff. We don't do that. You know, we're, we're trying to change people. Yeah, we want, we want people who want a relationship with their doctor. That's the truth. We want a relationship with their health coach who want to make lifestyle change. And uh, if you need shakes and, you know, meal plans and calorie counting, go to, you know, my fitness pal and the guy down the block. Go to, go to Instagram and hire some 20 year old to give oh, you the 30 pounds in 30 days. Yeah. yeah whatever. Exactly. It's fine. So many. It's fine. Yeah, seriously. Okay. Rosette. Now we're, we're talking about yours. We're going to your website. We're seeing all of these amazing pictures of food and recipes. And oh my goodness, it looks so incredible. Tell us about some of your favorites. Oh, my absolute, absolute favorite favorite is the Italian rainbow cookie. Uh -huh. So in New York, Italian bakeries all over the place, fresh breads, cookies. Um, of course, you move up to the suburbs, you can't find that kind of stuff anymore. But um, the best thing I think on our website is using the yellow cake, which is an almond flour, coconut flour blend. Again, everything sugar-free <laughs> to make Italian rainbow cookies. And I've had so many people that have tasted them and said they've, um, they're better than their sugar alternative. Um, so, I mean, that's my favorite. Again, trying to recreate all of our favorite sweets to just keep it exciting and fun and sustainable. You know, my parents, they're old school 
They don't want to cut out the carbs. They don't want to cut out the sugars. They try, but again, they have a sweet tooth too. So what do I do? I bring in our um, flavors that we're used to from, um, from um, the country. So like they like the tahini, they like the simple syrup, they like the rose water, they like the pachlava. So I make, I infuse those flavors into our basic um, mixes into either the cookies or the cakes. And you get a sense that you're eating, you know, whatever, let's say the, um, what was it? Like the babka, you know, you, you feel like you're eating babka. Clearly you're not gonna get that 100% you know, flavor profile, but it does the job. Sometimes it's, it's better, honestly. I think it's better, your but pizza I'm used is to better. It. Your pizza is better than, I yeah. would never eat. I'm, yeah, I'm not thinking pizza. I'm thinking like the babka and the Italian yeah. rainbow cookies. Oh, like your rainbow cookies are better. The, yeah, the PB and jelly bars is a favorite. You know, like you, you feel like you're eating a PB and jelly sandwich. You wow. Know, those bars. I'm trying to make it fun and exciting, even for the kids. You know, when they go to the um, supermarket, they see the bakery <laughs> section. Can we have that? Can we have that? I'll go home. I'll make you a blueberry muffin. Don't worry about it, you know? And it's it takes time to transition little kids or parents, you know, who are like, what are you talking about? You know, why am I not eating the sugar? This is fine. We were told we could eat a little bit of this <laughs> and that in moderation. And um, so I'm just trying to make it fun and easy for people to make that tra transition. And I'm, I'm excited about it. It's, it's fun for me. Love it. Wow. Italian rainbow cookies. I, I apparently don't get out much. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, it's, it's, I mean, I, maybe it's a New York thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. I have a lot of friends in California who haven't heard of it either. So you have to go for it. I'll, wow. I'll send over um, a mix to you so you can make oh, it. Oh, great. Awesome. Let me yeah. Know. yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I, I just, I love you know, seeing the two of you as a couple, each contributing in your own way. You know, my wife, when my wife and I started um, our business during the pandemic, um, after we got unemployed by our gym, it was, you know, part of our mission that we wanted to kind of do this together as well. And, and over time, as we would finish our weeks on Saturday mornings, we always go on a walk um, and we will ask each other what we call the three questions. And the three questions are, what is one thing that you learned or changed your mind about this week? What is one thing you wish you had done better this week? And the last one that we always end on is what is one thing that you are very proud of? And I want to ask each one of you, what is one thing that you are very proud of at this stage? You can start. No, you go ahead. For me, one thing I'm proud of is um, being able to implement this um, change and education into the kids, into my kids. Um, because at this young age, for them to be aware and understanding of the nutrition labels, sugar, carbs, and the effects it has on them, it's it's very valuable because then they're going to take that on and they're going to be able to apply it in the real world when mom's not around telling them they can't, you know, like buy that cookie or do whatever it is. So I think um, it's that education, understanding and knowledge is um, huge. And I'm, I'm proud to be able to you know, help them understand that and live it. That's incredible. I think all of us can think back on our childhoods and think like, what if, what if we would have had a different, you know, mindset around nutrition, maybe I wouldn't have fallen asleep in first period all the time. You know, it's like, it's so different to think back and imagine kids that are brought up in this kind of world, what their, what their potential can be. And, and I think it's absolutely limitless. Yeah. It, it's crazy too. Cause I do see, I mean, you parents want to be good parents don't want to give their kids the crap, but they, it, it's everywhere. And so they're getting the, the sodas and they're getting the chips and the cookies or the little muffin bags. And it's, it, it's hard. I mean, it, it's, you have to be dedicated to make the full change to see the reward. Cause it's so easy to just, you know, like, be like, let's buy that cookie. I'm not going to make it go have it. It's only one, but one a day adds up, you know? So yeah, that's amazing. I love that. So what were the questions we're proud of? of? No, just what wait. is the one thing that you are very proud of? Proud of, definitely the, this practice. You know, we are a full service um, remote telemedicine practice. And, you know, we're hiring, you know, we've, I, I'm proud about it. You know, it's been hard. It was scary and we're doing great work. Which, and, you know, we've published five studies. We're on our sixth study. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what we've done here. I really am. It's amazing. 
That's amazing. What a great answer from both of you. And uh, you should be very, very proud of what you're doing and, and contributing. And again, that ripple effect will, will go on for a very, very long time and affect so many people. And we're just so honored that both of you would take time out of your very, very busy days to come on our show today. Um, can you both let our audience know where people can go to find you both and connect with you and your work? You can find the low carb baking mixes at rosettesmix.com. And we're on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Rosettes Mix. So definitely come by, say hello, check out our recipes. If you have questions, we're here for you. Yeah, you can find me anywhere. Dr. Tro, D O C T O R T R O, Dr. Tro, social media, internet, you know, wherever, you know, <laughs> drtro.com. You can, you know, text our office 845 397 2873. Say you need help and we'll help you. Yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. It's ironic that you're in the low carbohydrate road because I feel like on Twitter, you really sugarcoat a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you have the reputation of saying it exactly how it is. Yeah, I mean, we, that's the, the we, you know, the, look, I, we don't have time for BS. I love we it. We don't have time for BS. I love it. Dr. Tro, Rosette, like I said, what an honor to have you guys on our show. I know you were very, both, both very busy, and uh, we really appreciate you and all the work that you're doing and all the impact that you're creating in this community. So thank you so very much for everything you do, and thank you for taking the time to be on our show today. We really appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, Casey, you. and say hello to Bethany for us, too. Absolutely, I will. She says hi as well. And this has been another episode of Balanced Body Radio. <laughs>